What's up guys, it's Yamacorn 1999 again, and today we're going to be doing a review of the ASUS ROG ZX50V. Let's get started. Okay guys, so as you can see, here is the laptop. I picked this up at Micro Center. I got a great deal on it. I got it for only $749, so with tax it costs about $800, which is an absolute steal on this computer. Um, I would definitely say this is a very good laptop for a budget-oriented uh, gamer, someone who you know doesn't have too much money but wants a decent laptop. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about the design and the ports on it. So as you can see right on the top, of course, we have the ASUS logo with the Republic of Gamers logo, which does light up when the lid is on. A nice brushed metal look. Uh, a textured plastic, which does actually feel pretty nice in the hand. Looking at the left side, we have a USB 2.0, a headphone and microphone jack, a DVD writer. Looking at the front, we have some activity lights, a SD card slot, and nothing else. On the left side we have the power jack, ventilation, USB Type-C, HDMI, Ethernet, and two USB 3.0s. And nothing else on the side. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside. When you open up the laptop you are greeted with a 15.6 inch 1080p display with a red LED backlit keyboard and a um, very nice large palm rest and trackpad. So let's go ahead and unlock it and we'll tell you about the specs. So inside this laptop it comes with a Intel Core i7 6700HQ clocked at 2.6 gigahertz and it will um, turbo up to 3.6 gigahertz. It comes with a 1TB 5400 RPM hard drive, which of course you can always upgrade to an SSD, which I plan on doing, because a 5400 RPM hard drive, well, let's be honest, it's pretty slow. Um, it comes with 8GB of DDR4 RAM, which I've upgraded to 16 gigs, very cheap upgrade, you can do that for like 30 bucks. I uh, did that just the other day, it's a good upgrade, I'd recommend that. And then of course you can put an M.2 SSD in it, and then, the star of the show, which really makes this special at the price, is you get a GTX 950M with 2GB of VRAM. So yeah, this is a definitely a very good priced laptop, considering you're getting an i7 and a 960M and a terabyte hard drive for only $749. I have not seen any other laptop out there that's as good a price as this one. So, moving on to the keyboard. The keyboard is a full-size keyboard. For a laptop, it comes with the full uh, numeric pad on the side. Very nicely LED backlit. Typing experience on it is pretty good. I would say it's one of the best I've used on a laptop. Um, it's very tactile and clicky for a keyboard. It does have chiclet style keys, but that's what you're going to expect on a laptop unless you get like a mechanical keyboard laptop by MSI, which not very many people are going to have that. Um, one complaint I do have to have about this laptop is the type of material that they chose for the um, palm rest and you know trackpad is gets very bad fingerprints on it as you could probably tell. It that's the only complaint I would have about this design is it gets very bad fingerprints. Um, temperature wise, the laptop stays very cool during gaming. The only noticeable heat spot that you're going to notice is obviously on the vent. That puts out a ton of heat, so just make sure you have good ventilation on the side. Um, I have not noticed any spot on the top of the laptop keyboard pomos area that it gets noticeably hot and uncomfortable during a long session of gaming. So, uh, no problem there. Screen-wise, we have a TN panel, which, I mean, it has okay viewing angles. I mean, they're not that great, but... You can't expect too much at this price point, you know? Um, besides the viewing angle issue, it does have very good colors on it. Of course, it's 60 hertz like most all other laptops. Um, yeah, it, the brightness, it gets reasonably bright. I mean, not too bright. It's at full brightness right now, actually. I just keep it at full brightness. Battery life-wise, it's actually pretty bad. 
You're only going to look at under gaming load probably a cut like 45 minutes. I mean, and I highly would not recommend gaming on this thing under battery because the performance is so much worse on battery. And uh, just normally use you're looking at maybe two and a half hours, three, if you're lucky, depending on what you're doing. So, how about performance, right? Well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do some benchmarks and show you guys the scores. Okay guys, so I've just run the first benchmark and we got a score of 4,070 in 3D Mark Fire Strike. We're now running the benchmark and I want you guys to keep in mind the settings and take a look at the FPS at the bottom. Because, well, obviously that's what's going to matter during gameplay. Sorry about the blurriness of the camera there, it just sort of went out of focus there, but... Our averaging, it looks like around the 60 FPS right there. On the benchmarking, so very playable. And please do note too, listen how quiet this laptop is. I mean, you can barely hear it. I'm really sorry about this going out of focus, guys. I don't know what's going on. But we're well, getting right around 60 FPS on average, so very playable game. Um, so yeah, GTA 5, you're looking about 60 FPS average. On these settings, if you have V-Sync on, obviously, you're going to be able to get higher if V-Sync is off. So I'm going to go ahead and run one last uh, benchmark, and that will be Cinebench. Okay, guys, so I've just run Cinebench R15. And we got a very respectable score of 661, which is very good for this price range. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much the benchmarks of this computer. Um, I know we only did if like three or so, but you get the basic idea. I mean, if it can run these fine, it, it's basically going to be able to run any new game. I mean, some games like Black Ops 3, I do have to put down to medium settings, but besides that, would I recommend this computer? Definitely. I would definitely recommend this computer for someone who doesn't have, you know, over a $1,000 or so to spend on a gaming laptop, but still want to have a decent gaming laptop. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much my review of this Asus ROG gaming laptop. This is, of course, my first gaming laptop I've ever had, so it is an interesting experience. So I hope you guys like this video. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. See you guys later. I'ma try it out. I'ma try it out. I'ma try it out.